Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Are you ready? The actual journey to the USA. After almost a year of planning, I was finally ready to cross the planet and go and study forestry. Who am I kidding? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. See, traveling doesn't stress me out usually because I'm a good planner, so I know I have every step of my trip planned, including like backup plans in case anything goes wrong. This isn't stressful for me. But this trip somehow was, because take a deep breath, this is what my schedule looked like. This was going to be a long trip and because I was living for so long, my family wanted to come to the airports and say goodbye, which was really nice because we were leaving at 3 a.m. So that was really nice of them. So we all went to the airport, uh, me, my mom, my dad and my two siblings and all arrived around 4 a.m. and everything was closed. So we just waited like half asleep, not really talking to each other, uh, just waiting until suddenly everything like came back to life around us. And the thing is, we didn't really say goodbye because, well, we did say goodbye, but we were not talking to each other for like an hour and a half. And then suddenly after like a rushed group hug, I was through security and I was gone. I was leaving. I was going to cross half of the planet for half a year. Why was I doing that? I was having second thoughts and when I do have second thoughts, my brain is really talented at creating horror scenarios. Like, what if I miss my flight in Minneapolis and I have to stay there? I don't know anyone. What if I'm not on the list in the university list thing and I have to come back to France? What if my roommates hates me? What if I don't make any friends? What if, what if, whatever. I was slightly panicking, but not really. But the biggest question was, what if my visa is not valid? Because there's a thing that the visa that gets sent to you by the embassy, so the actual official visa, isn't valid until you get a stamp on it. And you get that stamp when you successfully go through immigration, custom and immigration, at your first port of entry, which for me was Minneapolis. So technically, I could cross the entire ocean, which was like 11 hours flight, I think. And I could still get denied the right to stay in the US and have to come back. I wasn't okay with that. Now it seems like a good time to mention that I am claustrophobic. As in really claustrophobic, not just, ooh, I don't really like elevators, but I'll take them anyway because I'm going on the fifth floor. It's fine if you're that kind of claustrophobic person, but I'm not. Um, my claustrophobia actually have been diagnosed a medical condition, so it's quite serious, I guess. But that's not the point of this video. My point is, to help me survive this 15 hours flight, I was on drugs, as in medication, not drugs, drugs. I call them my claustrophobia pills, and they're crazy efficient. Like, they make me so relaxed and physically unable to have a panic attack, which is great. But they also make me kind of high. Ask anyone who's ever seen me taking those pills. It's, it, it's something, apparently. Those are great to avoid panic attack in public, which is always embarrassing, so it's a good thing that I have them. But it doesn't stop my brain from being able to think about panicky stuff. In fact, it's almost even worse, because my brain is going on this loop of thoughts that should be triggering a panic attack, but are not because of the pills. So it can just like keep going and going, and things get crazier and crazier in my brain. And I, I guess that's why I act kind of weird. So the flight to Amsterdam was kind of okay, I don't remember much of it. Uh, I took a lot of pictures. And then I got on the big plane, which was going to take me from Amsterdam to Minneapolis, so nine, nine and a half hours, something like that. Thinking, surely it's gonna be fine, because two hours was fine. It wasn't fine. It was one of those planes where you have like a screen, like a small TV um, on the back of the seat of the person in front of you. So you can watch movies and stuff. Uh, and I did because I was like, let's kill time. So I watched a movie and then I remember thinking, oh, I'm bored. How long is it left? Because you can click on the thing and then you show, the, uh, you show, it shows the plane on the map and it says that many hours left in the flight. And I remember clicking on mine and seeing seven and a half hours or yeah, like almost eight hours remaining. And I was like, 
that's not gonna work. That is not going to work. I had eight hours left and I was bored and not tired because I can't really sleep when I'm on, on those pills uh, for some reason. So I was not tired, bored, couldn't do anything about it and I couldn't get out so I had to keep my brain occupied. So I kind of did, I walked around the plane because it was a big plane so you could walk around without looking too much like a freak. So I did that trying to trick my brain into thinking that I wasn't trapped in a plane. Which to me is like a giant metal coffin flying above the ocean. I still don't know how I did it, but I did it. Somehow I landed in Minneapolis. Well, I didn't land it. The plane landed, but I was fine. I survived. No panic attacks, no nothing. I was good. And this is where the trouble starts. This was my first port of entry and because I was a visa holder, I had to go through custom and immigration. And in the plane, they gave us this form to fill with like a lot of questions about basically, are you bringing any food or pets or plants or anything that is, that could be potentially a problem uh, to bring in the US regarding like pest controls and invasive species and stuff like that. And because it's kind of my feel like I work in forestry department, it, I, I get that you don't want invasive species. But what I was most concerned about was the food section because in my suitcase, I had the tiniest can of aubergine spread. Aubergine is like eggplant if you're from the US. And I figured it's not gonna be a problem. Surely people bring stuff for like lunch and stuff like that it's gonna be fine. So I didn't write it on my form. And then I stepped in line and waited for my turn. But then as I was waiting in line, I saw them opening suitcases and I panicked. I was like, what if they open my suitcase? And then they find it and they say it's not fine. And they kick me out and put me back in a plane to go back to France or whatever. I know it doesn't sound realistic, but keep in mind that I was under drugs. I was under drugs. No, I was on medication, under medication, on medication. So with only two people ahead of me before it was my turn to go, I took back my form out of my bag and wrote something about my tiny aubergine cans. They didn't say anything. Of course it was fine. Uh, they asked me where I was going and why I was going there. I say that I was going to Corvallis, Oregon to study forestry and it was fine. They put the stamp thing on my passport, which I would show you, but somehow after filming last week's video, I lost my passport. Uh, it's not lost. It's somewhere, but it's just not here at the moment. So I can't show you, but it's a like, tiny little stamp. I still had five hours to wait for my plane and I didn't care that it was only 2 p.m. because I was exhausted. I didn't sleep at all through the entire flight uh, from Amsterdam. So I was exhausted and I was like, I'm not gonna walk around. I know people told me that this airport was amazing to like visit and stuff. I'm not gonna do that. I found my gate, sat down on a bench, wrapped myself around my suitcase, kind of like a koala and slept for five hours. I woke up when they called everyone for boarding the plane and boarded the plane and then slept for four hours. I didn't even see that we were taking off. I slept the entire flight crossing the United States. So of course when I landed in Portland at 10 p.m. I was completely rested and ready to go on with my day at 10 p.m. Now, because I didn't want it to take the bus from Portland to Corvallis and arrive at my new place around midnight, which would have been rude for my roommates, um, I booked a hotel in Portland to stay the night and then take the bus the next day, which was quite clever. So I did that, arrived at the hotel around 11 p.m. and the lady at the like front desk to check in gave me the card, the like key card thing for the room with the room number handwritten on it. Handwritten is very important for the rest of the story. So I take my suitcase, go upstairs, find the right floor and then try to open the door with my card and it's not working. Like it's going in the slot, but the, the handle isn't moving. So I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And I figured I was like, maybe it's jammed. So I need to like yank it a little bit. So. I wasn't very delicate with the door until someone opened it from inside. Uh, I just read the number wrong because I'm not saying her handwriting was bad, but it's just like some numbers we do differently in France and in the US. 
Uh, so I, I got the numbers mixed up or whatever. And long story short, a guy was standing in front of me in his PJs, obviously having been waking up by my yanking at his door. I apologized, of course. I apologized a billion times and he helped me read the card, uh, which was like actually a few rooms down the corridor. So yeah, that was the wrong room and I wanted to die. So when I got to my actual room, my plan was to take a shower and then maybe send an email to my family or whatever to like tell them I made it to Portland and then try to sleep to forget that this ever happened. Fate had other plans apparently because I couldn't figure out how the shower worked. Yep, and I actually have footage evidence of that because I recorded myself trying to like turn the shower on. J'arrive pas à faire fonctionner ma douche. Il y a ça qui sert à régler genre l'eau chaude, l'eau froide, mais ça allume pas l'eau. Ça qui fait passer la douche en baignoire et ça pour boucher le truc en bas. I could have gone back to reception and asked how the shower worked, but um, I didn't because I figured I was embarrassed enough for the day. So the next day, after very, very few hours of sleep and still no showering, I was ready to take the bus to Corvallis, which was just a two hours ride. How hard can that be? My stop was specifically called Corvallis Native American House, or Native American Long House, I think. And this was where one of my roommates was supposed to pick me up. So I had nothing planned after the bus stop in Corvallis. I had no idea where to go after that. Two hours passed and the bus driver stops in front of a hotel and yells Corvallis in the bus and everyone starts to leave the bus. So I'm like, okay, that must be the last stop. He said Corvallis, let's go, that, that should be it, right? So I exit the bus, grab my suitcase and start waiting because we were like maybe 10 minutes ahead of schedule. So I wasn't worried that no one was here uh, to pick me up. So I waited and slowly everyone that took the bus with me kind of like went away where they had to go and I was almost alone. There was just this one guy left and I figured I was like, it's a, it's a bit weird because I don't recognize anything looking like a campus. Because I remember the bus stop, uh, the Native American longhouse was supposed to be on the campus and that didn't look like campus, that looked like a hotel basically and it was called Hilton Hotel. So I asked the guy, I was like, excuse me, where are we? And he said, Hilton Hotel, Corvallis. And I was like, okay, that's not where I'm supposed to go. So I explain him, I'm like, I was supposed to get off the bus at Native American Longhouse. Is, is this another bus stop? And he said, yeah, that, that's not here. And so he gave me directions to go to the bus stop, the other bus stop. Um, and I got lost. I was trying to get there and you would think that it's quite easy to do because like the streets are all like this and then like that. So it was really, there's no way to get lost. But somehow I did and it was raining and I was panicking because what was I gonna do? I had no cell phone service in the US because obviously I just landed. Um, I had no Wi-Fi, no like internet connection or anything. And I had no idea what to do. I was like, I just have my street address, but I have no idea where that is. And I couldn't find a map in this town. So I walked back to the hotel because I was like, that's my safe point. That's the only place I know. And as I was walking back there, I saw it. A bus, the same bus that took me here. Well, not the same, but like the same company. So presumably the next one on schedule. And I saw that bus approaching the hotel and I was like, I'm going to ask the guy if he can take me back to the other bus stop. So I explained my problem to the bus driver and I was like shaking, almost crying. My accent was coming through so thick because I was panicking and he thought it could be a good idea to joke. And he told me, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not going to take you to Native American house. And I was like, what, what, what do I do now? I, I was lost. I, I think I actually started crying. And then he was like, get on the bus, kid. I, I'm going to take you there. Who would do that? So I got on the bus, I tried to calm down and specifically to not think about the possibility that my roommate would not be at the bus stop. He was still there. For some reason, this guy that I had never talked to had waited for me. 
So we got home, not talking much. Uh, by the way, home being five minutes walk from the hotel where I was with the first bus. Good job, Mel. And my roommate just literally showed me my bedroom, the bathroom, and then I think the living room, and then disappeared. Like, completely disappeared. I think I remember asking him for the Wi-Fi password, passcode thing. Password, not passcode. Uh, because I needed to tell my parents that I was okay and home. Uh, but apart from that, I don't think we talked. And in fact, I don't think we talked for a week. I got to my bedroom after 43 hours of travel, put my suitcase down, sat on the bed and cried myself to sleep. That's it. That's the story of my journey to the USA. Now, because I don't want to leave this story uh, on such a terrible note, I'm going to make an epilogue to this series. Tune in next week if you want to see it. You can click here to subscribe to my channel so that you get a notification every time I upload. You can also click there to see last week's video. I hope you'll have a nice week and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye bye!